All right. Let me welcome everyone here to our Wednesday in the Word for this week here at Blue Ridge View Baptist Church. We're glad you decided to join us this evening. We hope you're having a good week and hope the rest of the week goes great for you. We're uh, still because of the virus. We're doing this through the internet and we're thankful for that. Thankful for Brother Joe and his service to the Lord. We we just uh, can't thank him enough for what he does for our for our Lord and for our church here. We thank him for that. We thank him for Brother Tim and Brother Steve and uh, Brother Bob. Thankful for their dedication to do what they do and all the other people who make this thing go here at Blue Ridge View. We're here tonight to uh, in a mess in our country, big mess, but uh, we'll try not to talk about that too much. We'll try to talk about the greatest thing we can talk about in Psalm 23. We're going to look at Psalm 23. If you got your Bibles out there, wherever you're at, go ahead and turn there. We want to pray, first of all. We want to just go to the Lord and thank Him for His goodness, and we want to thank Him for allowing us to be here tonight, and Thankful for the opportunity to be back here Sunday to be with our brothers and sisters. We're so thankful that we're open, at least for two services on Sunday, and we just can't thank him enough for allowing us to do that again. And we just hope that gradually we be back to whatever normal is. We'll be back to that soon. In his time and his way, we're just going to thank him anyway. Oh. I know there's many people out there are sick. There's people having surgeries and people out there all over the Dacusville community with the, the COVID-19 virus. And we want to lift them up to you and people all over our country with the virus and all that and other sicknesses. And we, we pray for them. And we hope you're praying for them. Uh, we pray for our pulpit search committee. We ask that uh, God's will be done with their lives and, and their search our deacons and our church staff we lift them up to you hope you're praying for them daily it's, they need our prayers we all need your prayers and uh, we pray for our president and all the turmoil that's going on throughout the country we just hope we can take our minds off of it tonight and just look here in Psalm 23 to how good God is to us so let's go to the Lord in prayer Father we love you. And we're thankful for another opportunity to be in your house, to open up your word and see what you have to say to, to your children through your word. I ask you to use me to speak what you want to be told tonight. I, I pray that I'll be an encouraging and edifying and evangelistic through this message. I pray that people will be not discouraged, but encouraged. I pray for President Trump and all the nation's leaders, those that we're in agreement with and those we don't agree with. Many of them are running them up with evil, but we know you died on that rugged cross to forgive them of their sins as well. And we lift them up to you and pray that they'll repent. We pray for our country to repent. We pray for our church here at Blue Ridge View and our church worldwide. Ever say person that needs to repent and get right with you, they'll turn from their wicked ways and, see, and seek your face. And your word tells us you'll heal our land. Our land needs healing. And it can only can come from you, Lord Jesus. And we seek that tonight. We seek that tomorrow. And we're going to seek that all the days you give us here, the rest of our lives, that you'll heal this land. Father, we pray for many that are sick within our congregation, in our community. We lift them all up to you. If we mentioned everyone by name, we would be here for hours. But we praise you that you know everyone. You know every heartache, every pain, every tear. We give them all to you and ask you to help them. Help them overcome. Give strength to those that are weak. And we just praise you for that. We praise you for Calvary. We praise you for the blood. We praise you for that cross where you died for our sins, Lord Jesus. Well, we praise you for that empty tomb where you were buried. And we praise you that it's still empty. And it's going to be empty forever. That you're alive and you're, you are our Lord. You are our Savior. Lord, we just pray that people will be encouraged tonight. 
people will seek your face and turn and just listen to you and just be still. Help me to be still. Help us all to be still and seek your way and your will for our lives. Because we ask it in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. All right, Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is the most beloved passage of Scripture in, in all of the Holy Bible. Some, it's, it's their favorite. It's, all, it's probably most everybody's right up in the top two or three passages of Scripture is Psalm 23. Every time I've ever been part of a memorial service, this psalm has been read. And I've had the privilege to read it at many a saint's funeral. And I'm thankful that it comforts us. I'm thankful that it encourages us. And I'm thankful that the Lord is my shepherd. I'm thankful He led me to try to speak on this song of trust tonight. This song of trust. I'm going to try to give you some ways and some reasons that this, this is a song of trust. No, I'm not going to sing to you. Somebody say amen out there, but praise God. Somebody could sing this song. Somebody could sing it and it sounds sweet. But praise God, we can open up our Bibles, we can read it, we can hear it. Because it talks about the Lord Jehovah, the Lord, the God who is. The God who is, the, the one who was, and the one who is to be. Praise God. The Lord Jehovah. The Lord Jehovah of the Old Testament is the Lord Jesus of the New Testament. We praise His holy name because He is the eternal one. I'm thankful for not, tonight for His goodness. And we'll talk about that towards the end. Maybe we'll, we'll talk about it throughout. Well, let me read this Beautiful scripture to you. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, the Bible says yea in verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, praise the Lord for his word. Praise the Lord that He is my shepherd. Praise God, first of all, the, talking about the shepherd, the good shepherd, the great shepherd, the Lord. If you're a saved person out there listening to me, He is your, he is your shepherd. Will you trust Him? Will you distrust Him? Will you obey or disobey Him? If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, He is your shepherd. And I hope that you'll Realize that He wants to comfort you today. He wants to take care of you. Number one, He's our caretaker. Where will we be without our caretaker? The good shepherd. My shepherd. Or no matter what's going on. Yes, there's rioting going on. Yes, there's evil going on. Yes, there's racism going on. From all corners all over the world. But praise God. Our caretaker still cares about it. He's not into that stuff. He's not into rioting and hating your brother, hating somebody just because they, they're different from you, because their skin color is different. That's not the God of the Bible. The, the God of the Bible says love your neighbor. And he doesn't distinguish between skin color or what country you're from or wherever, what language you speak. God is no respecter of persons. The Lord loves us all the same. And he loves his children Red and yellow, black and white, they're all precious in His sight. The Lord is our caretaker. The Lord is my shepherd. Praise His name. He's our constant companion. He's constantly our companion. Sometimes we get lonely. Sometimes we like, feel like nobody cares. No matter how big a family you have or have not, 
no matter how you have hundreds of friends or just a few friends, even any, anybody can get lonely. Anybody can get discouraged. But the Lord, my shepherd, is my constant companion. And if he's, you're my brother and sister in Christ, He is your constant companion too. He's our personal Savior. He's our personal shepherd. He's our personal Lord. Praise God that He cares about us. Praise God He is our caretaker, our constant companion. R remember that. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to disown you. If you're saved, you're His forever. He's the eternal one, and you have eternity in you because you have Jesus Christ in you. Praise His holy name. He's our constant companion. He's our guide. A shepherd, big part of what a shepherd has to do is guide. But why does he have to guide? Because we are sheep. We are sheep. And I don't want to spend too much time talking about real sheep. With one of my commentators that I read and really admire, he said the greatest characteristics, the most common characteristic, the most common quality amongst all sheep, but they're stupid. I don't want to be identified as that, and I'm not calling you that. So, I try not to look at us as sheep. I try to look at us more as men and women, boys and girls. But the shepherd looks after his sheep. The shepherd knows he has to watch after them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day. 365 days a year he has to look after his sheep. The Lord has to look after his children. The, our shepherd has to look after us. We may not realize it sometimes. We may think we're pretty big and we're, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty big grown man. Sometimes I think I do a lot on my own. And sometimes if I do something on my own, it's usually I'm something, somewhere where I've messed up. Do something wrong. If I do something good, it's all because of Jesus. It's because I've been led and guided by Jesus to do something good, to do something right. If I do just stray off on my own, like a sheep's bound to do, I mess up. But praise God when I obey Him. Praise God, the Holy Spirit that's living inside me, the Lord is my shepherd. The Holy Spirit, the shepherd is, we're led to Him by, uh, as Christians, by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise God for the Holy Spirit. He guides us. And if we obey Him, life's a lot easier. You older Christians out there and you Christians who are trying and striving hard each day to obey the Holy Spirit, to obey the Word of God and the Spirit of God, is, life's a lot easier when we just, just obey where the, our shepherd is guiding us and the, whatever He's telling us to do. Would it make sense or don't make sense? If, if it comes from God, it'll make sense in the end. We need to obey Him because He is our God. And the Bible teaches us to quench not the Spirit. And that can mean a lot of things. That means we shouldn't be sinning. We shouldn't be doing things we shouldn't. But if when we disobey, just simple disobedience by not doing what we're led to do, we're quenching the Spirit. And I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that when I do it. Question yourself about that. See if you like it. You probably don't. Each individual Christian man and woman, boys and girls, needs to quench and not the Spirit. Because our caretaker, the shepherd, he'll guide us. He'll protect us. He'll bless us. Because he's awesome. He's so awesome. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, the Bible says that let your conversation be without covetous and be content with such things as you have for he has said I will never leave thee or forsake thee Jesus Christ is saying he will never leave us or forsake us the shepherd our shepherd so that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me People are running in fear today. Don't run in fear. Just boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Because the Bible says in 13, of, 13th chapter of Hebrews, verse 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
the same yesterday, today, for, forever. That's hard to imagine sometimes. I mean, we accept it and we believe it, but He's going to be the same 100 years from now He is today, next week. 2019 didn't look like such a bad year. 2020, it is like, wow, we some mind-blowing things going on, aren't they? But Jesus Christ is still the same today, yesterday, and forever. Praise God for that He's the same, that we can trust Him. This, we're talking about a song of trust. The Psalm 23, our caretaker, protects us, guides us. He's our constant companion. And some of these terms I'm going to use over and over as we move through the Scripture here. But He provides for us. Praise God. He has to lead his sheep. The, the regular shepherd out there in the wilderness, out there in the woods, out there in the pasture, he has to lead his sheep. They, they said that sheep, would, if they didn't have a shepherd, real life, full-legged sheep I'm talking about, if they did, they're so dumb, they would starve to death. But eventually they don't even know which way to go to try to find food. They don't even have the sense to survive. Praise God. God give us more sense than that. Praise God. For the senses He give us, we can survive, but God provides. No matter what we think, in the end, God has provided every ability we have, everything that we have. It's because God allowed us to have it. God allowed us maybe to have a job and earn money and buy it. Yes. Yeah. Food on the table, roof over our head, clothes on our back. God blessed us with abilities, abilities to do and survive. Praise God. But He, he guides us because we, we want and need a spiritual relationship. The strongest Christians have a strong spiritual relationship with the Lord, their shepherd. Think about it. You don't, they don't have to have biblical education. They don't have to have degrees saying that they have a doctorate in this and that, and I'm not knocking that. I think we all need more biblical education. But praise God, if they have that relationship, praise God, they're never going to understand the Bible to its fullest, what God wants them to understand, if they don't have a solid relationship spiritually with their shepherd. The Lord is their shepherd. And he, more we realize how he takes care of us, the more we realize how much we need him, and the more we can draw closer to him through his word and hearing somebody teach and preach and sing about the Lord. Praise God, the more it'll mean to us. Praise God, the more, the more better, good old Pickens County term, the more better for our spiritual relationship, the more we'll praise him and more we'll be thankful. And the more we praise Him, the more we're thankful. I know by reading God's Word, that pleases the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. He leads me and guides me. And He's leading and guiding you to have a stronger spiritual relationship with Him. The Lord is my shepherd. And it also says in verse 1, I shall not want. I shall not want. Don't let your wants get in the way of your spiritual relationship with Almighty God. It says, I, I shall not want. You could say, and I'm not changing Scripture, but you could say, I shall not lack. We shall not lack. God provides. God protects. God is there with us. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He beats every knee, where it be physical or spiritual or mental or emotional. He's there for all our needs. I shall not want. Praise God. If I'll just trust Him more. Trust Him more today than I did yesterday and tomorrow. Trust Him in, in a greater way. Praise God. A lot of Christian music artists sing songs about trust and increasing their faith and stuff like that. We need to pay attention to those. We need to pay attention. To, they're talking about the Lord who cares for us, who is our caretaker. Is Praise God. The Lord is our shepherd. Praise God for our caretaker. And number two, as we move on to verse two, we need contentment to realize 
and trust the Lord and his song of trust even more, we need contentment. The Bible says he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Maketh me to lie down in green pastures. There's a lot of discouragement going on out there in the world today. And it always has been. Some people are more apt for discouragement than not. But sometimes we need this need to stop and go lie down somewhere. If it's a green pasture, well, hallelujah. If it's in your special place where you can get along with the Lord, hallelujah. The Lord maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Hallelujah for green pastures. Hallelujah for we need rest. We need rest. And some people don't like to rest. Some people's metabolism, they don't, they just go, go, go. And they're just tremendously active. And some of them, they need medication to slow down. Well, I'm not for that. And I'm not against people who are sort of opposite to me. I'm sort of slow moving and not in a hurry. But some people need to slow down and rest. Some people need to lay down in green pastures. Praise God. He tells us in the book of Matthew to come unto him all their labor and heavy laden, and he'll give us rest. If we watch the news, and Lord help us if, we, if somebody is addicted to watching the news, please don't do that. If you hear anything I say, don't watch the news constantly. You're going to be discouraged. You're going to need some rest. Your brain's going to explode from all the bad news and all the mostly one sided liberal news. Yes, I said that, mostly. I don't watch much of that garbage. If I did, I would be, I'd be very anxious. I'd be worrying all the time. But I'm not worrying all the time. I'm not anxious. Not a whole lot, not because of what's going on in this world, because this world is not my home, but I'm just trying to tell you, come to Jesus and rest. Come to the green pastures and rest and have refreshment because He'll give us what we need. Each individual will get what we need in that green pasture, wherever that might be. The Bible also says, He leadeth me beside the still waters. Beside the still waters. We still need rest beside the still waters. We still need refreshment beside these still waters. I'm thinking we need peace. Not, I'm not talking about world peace. I'm not talking about peace between the races and peace between the political parties. I'm being peace that passes all understanding and it only comes from God if we just slow down and, and get in that green pasture and beside that still water and just be still and know that He is God and He is the God alone and He cares for you. Think about how much God cares for you and me. And it's overwhelming sometimes to me. And I hope it overwhelms you. No matter who you are or what you got and what you ain't got. No matter what you're standing in life. No matter how much. God cares for us all equally. He loves us all equally. And I'm thankful. He says be still in His Word. He says to be quiet. One of the hardest things I have to do is to be quiet. Because I like to talk to God a lot. I like to pray a lot. One of the hardest things I can I have to do, and and I have to you know just sort of punish myself sometimes. I just smack myself to say tell myself to be quiet in my prayer time, because God's trying to speak. You want to hear from God? Read His Word and talk to Him. Be quiet. Listen. He's going to share things with you. What's He going to share with you? I don't know. He's a personal God. He shares things with you. It's your business, and there's things with me that's my business. But praise God, help us all keep our eyes on Him and listen and be quiet. Because we'll have contentment. Contentment that doesn't, doesn't mean we're all going to be millionaires or billionaires. That's not what I'm talking about. We're going to be content. We can fight discouragement. A lot of discouragement going on. A lot of households breaking up. A lot of families breaking up. Praise God. Turn to Him. If you fix your eyes on Jesus, no matter what the problem, where He restores it, where He reconciles it, no matter what he, the problem going on in your family or your, your life or your friends, no matter what it is, 
You can have contentment knowing that Jesus cares. Jesus cares for us all who would be still and listen and keep our eyes on Him. We look at this world, we look at things, what we have or what we don't have, and we get discouraged. We see people being abused, people being hurt, and it's discouraging. But we have to stop and be still and be content and look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Keep our eyes on that shepherd. The sheep, when they stray and go off on their own, it's because they kept their eyes off the shepherd. They don't obey him. They don't follow him like they should. And we all should, as followers of Jesus Christ. One of the greatest things I like, somebody asked me, you know, who I am, what I do, my first response, I'm usually going to say I'm a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I'm a saved man. Yes, I'm a believer. But my favorite term for me is a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if I don't keep my eyes on Him, I'm not going to follow very well. If I don't keep my eyes on what He wants me to do, and I'm not going to be content. I'm not going to have the trust in Him like I should. And you aren't either. Help us all, Lord Jesus, to keep our eyes on you. To go to those green pastures and beside the still waters where you are, where you say relax, where you say rest and refresh, and he'll strengthen us anew for a new day and new grace and new mercy. Praise his name. He's our caretaker. Number two, he's our con- he's, he is our contentment. That's why... We can move on to number three. In verses three and four, He is our comfort. It is a comfort to know that the Lord is my shepherd. But the Bible says, yea. For some reason, I don't know, maybe I'm the only person in the world, in verse four of Psalm 23, that really just, that just lights my fire. The Bible says, yea. That says, yes. That's a, it all have an exclamation point there. If I was writing this, but it ain't up to me, but yea, you may not agree with me, but yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's a comfort to me. That's a that's reason to praise Him. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Because He restores me there. Have you ever been... Well, we've all been to that place. All of us. Because we all were lost in our sin at one time, wasn't we? All were lost. We had to be restored. We had to be redeemed. We had to be reconciled. Whatever term you want to use, we had to be brought back. Oh, it's a comfort to know that whew, walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We were dead men walking before we were born again. Praise God, that's a comfort. Praise God for Calvary. Praise God that Jesus went to the old rugged cross and gave His life, was crucified, took the beating I deserved, and shed His blood, His perfect sinless blood, that I could be restored, that I could find comfort, that I could live again. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Yes, praise the Lord. He restores. He, he brings back our, stu- our soul. It says, Yea, though I walk, verse 4. No, I'm sorry, verse 3. Let me back up to verse 3. I got ahead of myself a little bit. Verse 3, he says, He restores my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. He restores my soul. Praise God for restoration. Praise God my black heart is washed white as snow with the blood that flowed from Calvary's cross. Praise His name He restores my soul. At Calvary, praise God I went to Calvary to be restored. Praise God the Lord Jesus went there in my place. Praise God as we move on in verse 4 it says, keeps talking about the the shadow of death. If we notice here in verse 
3, first three verses, David, who wrote this psalm, is talking about the Lord. But now in verse 4, he's talking to the Lord. He says, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I will fear no evil, for thou art, thou art with me. We have his presence. Praise God. Yes. Where will we be without the presence of Almighty God in our lives? Ask yourself that question. Praise God for His presence. Praise God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Spirit that resides inside of me and every believer, every follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God for His presence. Praise God, David's talking to the shepherd. Praise God for our privilege in prayer. And whatever we do, we can look at the Word, but through His, through prayer, through communicating with Almighty God, we can talk to the shepherd, our shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. His presence. He says, fear not. And that's hard not to do. Even if we were back in 2019, even not without the virus and the rioting and all the stuff that's going on in 2020, just look, even look back, it's hard not to fear. Because people are people. I'm a people, and sometimes I want to fear. But sometimes, uh, or most times, in all my saved life, the Lord just says, look at me, son. Look at what I've done for you. Look how I bless you. Look how I treat you. And I have to say, forgive me, Father, for fearing. Forgive me for being anxious. Praise God. We should fear no evil as we go through death. And it's talking about death, but we shouldn't fear this evil. The Bible says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The shadow of death. A dog's shadow can't bite you. A man with a gun shadow can't shoot you, or if he had a knife, the man with a, a knife in his hand, he can't stab you. His shadow can't stab you. The cat can't scratch you. It's just a shadow. But praise God, death can't sting us. Death can't kill us if it's a shadow of death. To have a shadow, you have to have substance. To have a shadow, you have to have light. Light on that substance you got a shadow. We should not fear that. Can somebody say hallelujah out there? It can't kill us. This death can't kill us. Oh, we may eventually, if God doesn't come get His children soon through the rapture, we may eventually all, we will all face an appointed time to die in this old body. But that's just a stepping stone into eternity. That's just a stepping stone on to glory. Praise God, the shadow of death. We should not fear it. We should rejoice. Even rejoice when a loved one dies. If they know Jesus, even in our most heartbreaking times when a loved one dies, we still can rejoice because the shadow of death has not got a hold of them. Jesus won that victory. Jesus took our death. And we don't have to face that because the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. Praise His holy name that comforts me. Praise His holy name that He loves us. He blesses us. Praise the shepherd, the good shepherd, our caretaker. He gives us contentment and comfort as we try to just say and try to just impart the message that it's a song of trust. And we need to trust Him more no matter how bad Washington, D.C. gets or Seattle, Washington or Greenville, South Carolina, or Pickens County, or wherever the street you live on, no matter how bad it gets, we know for the child of God, we're just passing through. Hopefully it's not going to get any worse. Let's pray and seek God's face and seek His way that He will heal our land. But if we don't get healing in our land, we're going home someday. Because God cares. And God's no matter how much time God gives us, we're showing in this song of trust, He cares. In verse 5, 
He cares so much. David's still talking to the shepherd, still talking to his Lord. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now most of us don't have a lot of enemies. Most of us were, were, will never be king like David. You know, have war and be at war and whatever. But praise God. This also represents how the people of Israel, David knew the Israelites needed a table and God prepared that. This doesn't say God had somebody make this for me. God did this. God sent these people here to do this. This says that thou preparest a table before me. Thou. The shepherd prepared this table. God has prepared a table for you and me, some place to live, some place to give us what we need. It's out there for us to take. We'll take it. All the Israelites had to do as they were going through the valley, going through on their way home to the promised land, was just eat of the matter. Just eat and be satisfied. Well, we know how to be satisfied. We don't always have to have the most expensive thing that, and from the most expensive restaurant. Praise God, He provides what we need. Praise God, He's prepared us a table, and we just got to eat off what God gives us. And God, we need to search out and realize it'll satisfy and sustain us because He cares. Remember, He cares for us. Some of you. Some of you have been dead broke before. I've been dead broke before. And wondered, could I even get a sandwich? God provided. God's provided much that, much more than that in my time. And many of you out there could think about the table God prepared for you. It didn't have to be, you know, ribeye steak and all that. That's wonderful if He did. But did he provide a meal when you were broke? Did he keep the lights on? Did he keep the phone going? Did he keep all the utilities going for you even though you were out of work? And God provide because God cares for his own. Swallow our pride and just let, let God handle it. Praise God. Because he cares. Is that, how's that got to do with David? Well, it's got to do with David's you read the Bible about David, David wasn't always sitting in the king's palace, was he? David was on the run from the king sometimes and didn't know what, where his next meal was coming from, but God provided. Let us all know that God cares. Let us all be people like David. The, the things that David did good. Now, David wasn't perfect by any means, but he was a man after God's own heart. Men, ladies out there, be people who are after God's own heart. Praise God. No matter what kind of enemies we have, we be political or whatever it is. Hopefully we don't have enemies to we have to lock our doors and load our guns for. But if it comes to that, load hot and be ready to protect yourself. If God give you sense enough, to, God will take care of you. If you don't fight the battle, we got to fight the battle because God cares. And I'm just saying we need to protect our own, take care of our own, our own homes, our own land. Let's, let's do all we can because God has provided the greatest nation in the world for us. Let's, God cares. Show Him you care by preparing and being ready to fight for what's right. Fight against abortion. Fight against injustice of any kind. Stand up for whatever. Show God you really care that, and just really love Him by returning your care for, for the lost, your care for the unborn, your care for those who are being abused. And many people right here at Blues View do that. Keep on keeping on. God cares, and God says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Guess we do have enemies as Christians. People who say that we're wrong and they're right. Especially people who are far left who want to kill innocent babies. They're our enemies. Now we want to turn them into our Christian brothers and sisters, but they are our enemies. 
And he says, Thou anointest my head with oil. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. The oil just represents the presence again of God. Knowing that David was anointed king, you were anointed, the Bible tells us, we're royalty. Because our Heavenly Father is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Praise God. Thou anointest my head with oil. Remember God's presence. God is with you. God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. He is the good shepherd. He is more than enough. And the Bible says in the last part, we show in, in verse 5, it talks about His cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. I have great friends. I have great family. I have great food and drink. But I want to taste that manna that only comes from, from God sometimes. That's the most strength I get. I can eat all day and drink all night. Nourishment that God provides, and that's great, and I'm thankful for it. But my cup runneth over. There's an old song. The good gentleman says, the old Southern Gospel song, I believe it is. He says, I'm drinking for my saucer because my cup's overflowing. Something like that. He got so much of God, he just he's not talking about beverage, he's talking about God flowing in his life. God blessing him so much. And God blesses me and he blesses you if you realize it. Our cup runneth over. As Americans, as but especially as Christian men and women, boys and girls, our cup runneth over. We should praise Him and thank Him. And before I get too long-winded, I need to wrap it up. Before I get lose you out there, it's a song of trust. He cares, number four, but number five, there's a covenant. There's a covenant. I'll be brief here. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God has given us a place to stay forever. God has given us a house. He, be in His house. Don't know what kind of house it's going to be, but David, who's known be, no better than us, just because he's famous in the Bible, just because he's king, God's no respecter of persons again. This applies to me and you, brother and sister in Christ will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He's made a covenant with us. He, God can't lie. There's no unrighteousness in Him. There's no nothing bad in Him. We know for sure that this eternal God we serve and we love, our Good Shepherd, is going to bless us forever. In His house. Some days I can't wait to get there. But in the meantime, in the meantime, we've got to trust God with the COVID and rioting and political turmoil. No matter what's going on, let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep our eyes on the Word of God. The Lord is my shepherd. If you feel discouraged, if you get down to discouraged the rest of this week or whenever, open up and read somewhere, somewhere in the psalm. Read Psalm 23. If that don't curb your discouragement, I don't know what will. No, it Jesus loves you. Jesus cares. The Bible says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. One of the great Bible commentators, I'm going to close, close with this. One of the great Bible commentators that I think there is, a man named John Phillips, he said this, We are on a journey. Hard on our heels come God's two great ambassadors, goodness and mercy. Goodness takes care of my steps. Mercy takes care of my stumbles. I'm going to read it again, and then I'm going to pray. and We're going to praise God. We are on a journey. Hard on our heels come God's two great ambassadors, goodness and mercy. Goodness takes care of my steps. Mercy takes care of my stumbles. Father, we love you today.
We thank You for this time in Your Word. We pray that through Your Word and through that You spoke through me to encourage somebody, to help somebody learn something, to let some lost soul know that You care and that You died for them. We pray for our upcoming services. This Sunday we pray that the house of God will be full. No matter where they social distancing or not, nobody's going to be turned away. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We lift up every sick person out there. God, we, you're so good. We know you know them all. We ask you to give them a good night. We ask for healing for these United States of America. We ask you to bless our policemen. We ask you to bless our politicians and lead them all in the direction you would have them to go. We pray for Blue Ridge View Baptist Church. We thank you for it. Help us to continue to stand for what's right, stand for you, and help us here at Blue Ridge View to remember to trust you, to trust you more. We thank you, Lord Jesus.